Apple had WWDC this week, and there were a lot of updates, which were mostly centered around design. The last big redesign was iOS 7, when they shifted away from skeuomorphism to that like flat and minimal aesthetic that we've had since then. But this year, it was all centered on liquid glass, which is a new material that's supposed to respond like in real time to your input and what's on your screen, so everything feels fluid and natural. And I think the coolest part is that this isn't just limited to iOS, it's going to be a universal design language across all of their platforms, so they can, like they said, set the stage for their next set of devices and interactions. But I could see how this new design language that centers on the UI being more clear and out of the way of the content could be perfect for glasses. Unrelated though, when they transitioned to this section, the camera flew over all of the glass at Apple Park, which is just a really nice attention to detail. And along with the design language, they also unified the version numbers across all the platforms. So everything is now OS 26 to line up with the upcoming year. But getting into like the actual OS level updates, I'm gonna start with iOS since I feel like everything really inherits from there and it builds up for the rest of the platforms. Starting with the lock screen, the clock now adapts to the space. So the typeface like scales dynamically and the subject of your background always stays highlighted even as notifications come in. And the icons have this new like clear and transparent look that reminds me a lot of the minimal phones and in dark mode, a lot like e-ink devices, but I I kind of like it. I have some concerns here with like legibility and finding the right app when everything is clear. Uh, but I'm definitely going to give it a shot and see how it is. The Photos app got tabs back. Safari got a new floating bar with edge to edge web pages and the UI just kind of goes away. And camera was simplified. So everything's just a tap or a swipe away. I'm excited to try out like how much easier this new camera app is to use. Like all the settings used to be buried away in like menus and different buttons, or you'd have to go into the settings to even find some of the options. I think this will just make it that much easier to get the perfect capture of the exact settings that you want if you want to change them on the fly. Phone got a ton of updates. Um, Visually, it's now a unified layout, so everything's in one page. There's call screening for robocalls and hold assist, both of which I think are going to be really interesting to try. I know this has been available on Pixel for a while now, but I'm excited to see it come to a new platform so more people have access to these cool features that would just make life a little bit easier. Also, Messages got some cool updates to put it like on par with other like chat apps. So you have polls, uh, typing indicators for group chats, and custom conversation backgrounds, which you can generate using Image Playground, but I don't know if if I would ever do that. And there's a couple small updates, like the music app got auto mixing uh, the same way DJ would do it. Maps has preferred routes and visited places and live translation will be available in messages, calls, and FaceTime so you can communicate across languages. Also, visual intelligence got a pretty cool upgrade. So it now like uses your screen as context. You can just take a screenshot and either search chat GPT or across your apps for whatever you're looking for. It can even add stuff right to your calendar. And I think this is the one like AI thing I've been wanting. Like I want to take a screenshot of something and then I want it to just go to my calendar. Moving on to watchOS, along with the liquid glass refresh, I feel like there's a big emphasis on all the workout features. Like they refreshed the app for a better layout and they added Workout Buddy, which is an AI that's going to analyze your historic workout stats and then give you live TTS on how you're doing during a workout. I think this will be interesting to try out because it's like good information to have and like good to hear during workouts, but I want to know how often is it really playing. Smart stacks are also more intelligent and get prompted to you on the watch face based on trends in your daily routine so you can access them more easily. Also, there's a new gesture called a wrist flick, which I'm kind of excited for. So you can dismiss notifications, mute calls and end timers one handed. And as someone who uses Apple Notes for literally everything. I'm glad it's finally coming to the Apple Watch. Sometimes I start these scripts by just like talking to my phone and then going back and editing that that transcription later on. And this will just make it easier to do anywhere without having to pull out my phone. Now, VisionOS hasn't been a thing for very long, but it's been interesting to see what they add to it year over year as they build up the platform. Like this year, they added widgets that integrate into your space and they can remember where your apps are even after a restart. And both of these seem like actual AR experiences since the content is like existing in your space around you. And I've said this before, like it's been really cool to see how they roll out this brand new platform, how they update it year over year with software. Um, also so excited to see what they do for the next step in the hardware. But moving on to iPad OS, this was the most like surprising to me, if that makes sense, right? Like they're they're adding a lot more overlap between the iPad and the Mac than I thought they would. There's a new windowing system with a more precise mouse pointer that just makes it feel a lot more like a computer and an updated file system that even lets you put folders of files in the dock for easy access. It's also easier to just record good quality audio and get a clear local recording from a call if you're like filming a podcast. And when you're done editing that footage and audio, you can also export it in the background while you 
do something else on your iPad. I feel like the iPad is getting to a point where I can like truly see it as an alternative to a laptop for like the more intensive creative stuff. And I've edited some stuff on the iPad before moving it over to my Mac in the past, but I might try and see if I can fully replace like end to end making a video on my iPad in place of a MacBook. Comment down below if that's something you'd be interested in seeing. And last up is Mac OS. Now this is usually my favorite one since I spend the most time on my MacBook for now at least, uh, but it's now gonna be Mac OS top, which brings in everything from iOS 26, but also gives you a transparent menu bar so your screen feels bigger, um, but it's also fully customizable along with the control center. And inside the OS, there's a lot more personalization options like for folders, you can add colors or even emojis to them if you're working on a project and wanna keep everything organized. And I feel like I use shortcuts more than the normal person. So I was excited that it also got updates for some more intelligent actions. So you can either tap into on-device models or chat GPT. I'm excited for on-device models because I have some shortcuts where I just use it to take a transcription and summarize it. This can happen now on device without having to send a call to chat GPT. Also Spotlight got a lot more capability from just accessing app menus, like actually interacting with the content that's on your screen. These are just some of the highlights from WWDC, but I am getting all of these like downloaded on my devices and I plan on testing them out. So be sure to subscribe down below for that and more videos about tech cameras and making. Here's a video about an AI monocle and here's a video that you think you're gonna like the best.